Look at nature. It impresses us with its harmony. Everything in it is done with such complex sophistication, and its existence depends on inviolable laws. The law of succession rules nature. Parents teach their children how to adapt to the world and give them knowledge that they need to survive in nature's wildness. That same inviolable law also rules human society. Apart from the fact that human beings need to pass spiritual experience onto successive generations, parents also teach moral and ethical values to their children. Several centuries ago, it was almost impossible to find a man who obtained his spiritual experience from outside of the family. Perhaps uniquely in the history of mankind has it happened that the law of succession almost entirely ceased to exist on a national scale. The revolution of 1917 in Russia turned traditional values upside down. The basis of society was destroyed. Christian spirituality and morality ceased to be determinant in the life of the whole state and later in the life of each Soviet family. Nowadays, people often say that the state became atheistic, which sounds quite neutral, similar to secular state. But it becomes much easier to understand when we realize that Soviet families tried to live without God. Only if we look at it from this angle do we begin to realize the huge scale of the tragedy that happened in society as a result of the revolution. Seventy years after the revolution, the church was persecuted no more. A law of freedom of conscience and belief was issued. Dark atheism became history. The gospel was professed with a new force, perhaps never seen before in Russia. There was even a special term which appeared in that period of history, the second Christianization of Russia. It turned out that despite the years of atheist propaganda, people's spiritual thirst hadn't disappeared, but had only fallen asleep, waiting for the proper moment to return. Many young people came to church because only there could they begin to manage to find answers to their spiritual questions and needs. There now appears to be a very interesting phenomenon, unique in the history of Christianity. It's not parents who give their children the basis of spiritual life, but children bring home the word of Christ. Here we can see one of the most far-reaching consequences of the atheist period. The contrasting views of Christian children and atheist parents give us a vision of the scale of the tragedy of the severe persecution against Christianity on the state level. These youngsters are literally in the middle of a spiritual war with the legacy of the communist regime still maintained in the views of their parents. In 1996, my grandma died. She was a very religious woman. Next day after her death, I felt the need to go to church. The stimulus came from my grandma. She was a believer, but her ideas about orthodoxy were pretty strange sort of pagan or folk beliefs. My parents studied in a Soviet school, thus my mother obtained a pure Soviet atheistic consciousness that is almost impossible to change. The understanding of what was going on and what I should do came to me when I was a grown-up already. About two years before, I got this understanding during the procession of the cross. Before that, I didn't go to church. It was not my parents who made me turn to faith. I made attempts to talk to my mom, but I don't think I can reach her heart. My parents are believers, but they do not participate in church life. Some barrier doesn't let them do it. They are that type of believers who think that lighting candles or observing holidays is enough. My mom is a victim of atheistic upbringing. She is close to all this. I suppose her generation has been underdeveloped in a strange way. They were not given any spiritual base. They don't have any ideas or strong positions on the question of religion. Though mom and grandma understand that their mission is to bring up children, they have loving hearts. 
but I don't know which road leads to their faith. It's familiar to parents that their children are not believers, but suddenly they see that the children start devoting a lot of time to church activity, prayer, and fast. For parents, fast is one of the barriers that they can overcome in no way. The barrier is caused by communist ideology of the USSR, then the fall of the Iron Curtain, when all that they had known before was ruined. They know the aim towards which they want to go, but what stops them is the understanding that they had stood on a wrong foundation, had been guided by wrong principles. It frightens them. I think for my mom and other women of her age, it's a simpler way to live. Faith and purification of one's values is a tough labor for the soul. Probably laziness is deeply rooted in them. They don't want to stay in church for one to two hours during liturgy. Besides, it's their own son who teaches them, and for them it seems to be a wrong paradigm. One day, the parents of a young parishioner came to me and said with annoyance, Our son used to be a regular guy, drank alcohol and smoked. We often quarreled with him. But now he's unbearable, doesn't listen to music, quits smoking and drinking, spends many hours in church. I asked them, was the past better for you? They said, it was familiar, that's all. The greatest fear for my parents is my fasting. They don't have any idea of what sin is. There was a collective thinking in the USSR, without any chance for personal initiative. I do this because everybody is doing this. They don't see the sense why they should confess their sins. All troubles that they go through, they see as a punishment for their sins. As if through these sufferings, they pay for everything wrong they have done in their lives. A whole generation grew up in Russia that knew nothing about God. They were born without faith. Even if a grandmother christened her grandsons, she did it secretly. Their parents and they themselves were not aware of it. Thus, they didn't have any idea how to give their children a spiritual upbringing. Thank God some of them come to church during the last phase of their lives and repent their sins. Soviet ideology made people become weak-willed persons who could only think and act within strict narrow limits. The communist society of Russia is to blame for this. Gradually, step by step, my father is changing. God willing, my mom will find her way to faith through my father. Mom says she likes the changes that happened within me. The most pure way to preach is to start living in accordance with laws of one's faith. Thus, the whole life becomes an open and clear testimony of what a true Christian should be. Otherwise, people will never believe us. If one listens carefully to what people say and gives them Christian love, without even a single word of preaching, sometimes that will have more of an effect on non-believers than teaching dogma.